What's happening? No big news. Oh, I ain't got no news. <laughs> I got zero news for you guys, yo. <laughs> Did you come through a preseason as you expected, or where are you? Um, yeah, I think, I think, um, I think I'm good. Uh, I think just continuing to get that that game feel and that game, um, those game reps, which I think that's that's the most important. Continue to put the work in outside of that, um, and just getting ready, like slowly ramping up for the season. Nick said in Montreal Friday that one of his teams, strong teams, has to be. It's going to work hard every night. I don't want to say it's difficult, but how hard is it to get up for all the to play hard like you guys yeah. do every night? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard, but that's what we had to be. We got to be that, you know. Um, there's a lot of talent around the league, like, and I think that um, we have a lot of talent, but we, we also have character guys and guys that can do that. Like, why not? Why not come every single night and, and try to try to grind every single game, uh, be the, 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 the hardest playing team? Because um, we have the person who can do it. So. I think that's how we see it. You can steal with some wins in the course of the season. You can get your five or six wins, which is the difference between maybe sixth and third. Right, I mean, like, yeah, 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 no, I mean, it's, yeah, so it's a lot. We, we saw that last year, so it's, it's and, and it, it's gotten better, obviously. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be hard. So all those games are super important. We've talked a lot about continuity. Is there an area, whether it's the half court offense, whether it's the way you play defense, whether it's something else entirely, that you feel that the most? That, that I feel like that what? you feel the continuity helps the most. Uh, I mean, I think obviously just defense, and then like just knowing, you know, like I I know we know our tendencies, we know what each other like to do, and and you know, obviously we have the guards that the guys that we want to put on certain people, and then. And then obviously just on offense, just knowing each other. Like I think that's always important. Like you build that chemistry, you, you get to, to hang out more and you get to know people more. And that all helps in, into the game. Like when you think back to when you guys really started playing this super, super aggressive, you know, get it in the passing lane type of defense, how much of an adjustment was that? And is it almost second nature now for you? It's hard. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, and I think it's easy. Yeah, but it is takes it a like lot. A mental adjustment. Yeah, it takes a lot. I mean, it, it's not even mental, physical, because yeah, yeah. it takes a lot. <laughs> you gotta, you know, it's, it's a lot of running, it's a lot of pressuring, and 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 again, we feel like we have the ability to do it, and um, that's the way we play, and, and you know, we just try to try to do that to the best of our abilities. Being around uh, OG over the summer and then here in camp, where have you seen the most growth in his game? Um, yeah, I think OG just continues to get better. He continues to get better every single year. He works on this game, um, and I think that yeah, you just gotta you just gotta continue to you know keep that growth, and, and I think we're gonna need everyone this year. Um, so I just want want everyone to just continue to work, uh, continue to play together, and then do the other things that he does. He does well, play defense, get steals, because um, he can do that. You know, he can he can score and play defense. That uh, bench celebration rule is that gonna take uh, some getting used to? Yeah, man. Well, I mean. The way we play, I'm like, I don't know, I'm gonna be on the bench that much, but <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I'm more on the bench. But, um, but yeah, we're gonna have to, to watch out because it's, it's pretty, it's a hard line, basically. Like, it's like, yeah, that was tough. I don't know. We're gonna have to get used to it. Let's see if they actually do it. Yeah. When the season starts, right? So maybe you can get them to move the benches back. Like I mean, a, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, they're not, not gonna, gonna, they're not gonna sell those tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not. Is the, I'm hardest not. Part, is the hardest part staying off the court or sitting down fast? Or sitting down fast, you said? Yeah. We won't let you stand for too long, and then we'll yeah, let yeah. you go on it, which is harder for you. Yeah, it's just like, if you want to support your team, like, you're feeling, you know, you're hacked up, like, it's hard to just be, like, there, sitting there. Like, it's just, like, it's kind of boring, and, and obviously it helps you warm up, too. When I'm on the bench, <laughs> when I'm on the bench and I'm just sitting there, my legs get cold, you know? So, yeah. Uh, Pascal, this time last year, you're coming off of your shoulder injury. You missed the first couple of games of regular season. Now you're right to go. How do you feel like in general? I am blessed, basically. I think it makes you appreciate it because, you know, this time around last year, I was with Washington, like, and uh, I hated it. I hated every single minute of it. Um, so just being out there on the floor, like, feeling blessed, like, I, I'm just I'm just happy to be able to play basketball and, like, at this, at this time and, and be ready for the season with my teammates and, I'll just continue to build that chemistry early because I feel like um, it took away from last year a little bit, just me coming in, figuring out everybody. So um, I, obviously I get that earlier this year, so, so it feels good. And how frustrating was it, like, because you're so close to getting an all-star last season on the all-star mm. team, mm. and because you missed those first couple of yeah. games? I mean, I, I don't look at it like that, you know, to be honest. Like, it is what it is. Like, I, I try to continue to just focus on me, focusing on winning because at the end of the day, like, 
um, I just want to, again, like being healthy for me was the, the, the hardest thing. And I was like, yo, I was just happy to be healthy, like, and playing at the level that I wanted to play at. Obviously, I feel like I can get better, um, and which is what I'm focused on now. And I think the other thing's going to come with us winning. I think it's fair to say the slow start last year was because of Luke Beasley and rehab and missing right. those 10 games. Right. Are you ready to hit the ground running? Like, <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, shit. Yeah, like, you know what I, mean? Like, I mean, yeah. It couldn't last year. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, like I said, like I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm healthy. Like I'm, I'm yeah. solidly sitting at the point where I want to start, not like in right. the point where I gotta play catch up. You know, um, obviously, it's still get, to get, you gotta get a game speed and like sure. preseason is not the same as regular season. So it's like all that you still gotta adjust. But again, I get a head start compared to last year. You glad the preseason's all over? You get to play for real on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, you know, we've been going hard, we've been going after it for the last two, three weeks at each other, whether it's in-game scrimmages, other teams preseason where it doesn't really, you know, count. So it's going to be good to go out there and put our record together. It's fair to say Pascal went off to a slow start last year because of William Green in the rehab and missing a bunch of games. Do you see him ready to sort of hit the ground running this year? I feel like Pascal is always ready to hit the ground running, you know, he works hard, he works on his craft, he cares about his craft, so... That's not going to be an issue. We always going to do that. Physically last year, physically last year, you missed the first 10 games and you got to play a little bit of catch up. This year he's healthy and ready to go. Have you seen a difference at the, at the start of the year, the start of this year? Again, I've seen no difference. The way he approaches the game, the way he puts in the work with his craft, the way he focuses, there's been no change from, from outside looking in until he's back here and you know, behind closed doors and everything. You've been around OG a couple of years now, spending time with him over the summer and, and in camp, obviously, here. Where have you seen the most growth in, in this game? I would see the most growth really in, I would see just every year he's coming back better. You know, he's adding something, whether it's a little bit stronger or a new move or how he, you know, just adds to his game each year. He never comes back to say, you know, as I said last year. He's been getting better. Every year we've been getting better. We're growing, we're getting stronger, we're getting a game more, we've been in more game situations, our experiences are getting more. Every year we add up, there's more playoff appearances and more fighting for the playoff time. So, you know, we were kind of used to it. It's year five for me, year six for him. So it's just, you know, what it is. He had a big game in Montreal the other day. Yep. The, the way that your offense works, it works, it's pretty balanced. Like, it's not one guy that has a, a huge usage rate or anything like that. Is that sort of the benefit of the way the team works is that one night it could be you, one night it could be OG, different guys stepping up either when guys are out or just having big games on different nights? Sure, it varies by t by night and stuff like that, but you know, everybody on our starting lineup and even guys coming off the bench think they can, you know, average 20 and believe in themselves and believe in their craft and they care. They've proved it, they've shown it, so that's really just what it is. Any given night it could be anybody, so you know, just go out there, play hard, it is what it is. You feel your IT band okay, your injury? Oh yeah, all good, all good. I just got hit uh, last game. You know, they implemented the new clear path rule, so it's like fouls and stuff, so guys are either trying to go hard for the ball now and hit you a little bit harder so you don't get it, so they can't decipher what call it is. So I just got banged on a little play, and I'll be good, we're ready, so I'm good at practice today. Um, not just you individually, but the whole team. I mean, there's so much continuity from last year to this year. How, how much more attuned is the group to how Nick wants you guys to play at this point now versus at this point last year? Oh uh, man, it's completely 360 down to just being comfortable around guys of what to ask them, what to talk about, what to communicate about, even how to communicate. You know, last year was our first year together. We didn't really know how to, you know, say certain, some guys you can yell at, some guys you have to be quiet to, some guys you have to approach them a little differently. But so, you know, just learn everybody from the top guy to the bottom guy, uh, how to go from there. Uh, like, was the defense complicated? I, I mean, it's such a different system, and, and so many things are asked of you guys. Is, like, is that where continuity maybe pays off the most on the court, or, or where yeah. else? You could, you could say that for sure, but again, I feel like the biggest thing we grow from is the experiences. Yeah. You know, when we actually go out there and we put the defense into play, and we see it work, we see it don't work, we see how it broke us down, we see. So once you go from there, that's when you can really go to the drawing board and figure it out. Any uh, updates injury-wise? Is Gary able to do more today? Yeah, we had a fairly light one today, but both Gary and Malachi were cleared today to go. Um, we didn't really, it, it was more of a still of a, a learning teaching session today. Tomorrow we'll, we'll go at it pretty good, so we'll probably have a little better report for you tomorrow on that. But they were cleared by medical. And it looks like Chris is doing a little bit of light work. Is he getting closer? 
I think so. Yeah, I, he did. He did get some light work. Um, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure with the timeline on him. So, but yeah, at least he's out there and he's moving, which is oh, I think a, a big positive. He looks. I mean, I'm watching him right now. He looks like he's moving pretty good. So that's a good sign. I want to ask you about OG. I mean, obviously he had a big game the other night in Montreal. What have you seen from him in camp here over the last few weeks? Are you happy with the progress? Well, seeing? you know, I think that he. Um, um, needed some rhythm, needed some conditioning, needed some reps, you know, things like that, that he kind of looks to me like he kind of planned it out the way it turned out, right? And um, uh, he didn't play a ton of minutes um, almost all the way up. I was trying to sneak a few more minutes in there just for conditioning and rhythm, but, but he didn't, you know, he didn't do it. We didn't do it. But I'm good, I'm good now. I mean, he he got himself to some confidence and got himself feeling good, and I thought he got himself back defensively, making an impact as well. So that was good to see. There was all that stuff during the summer about his role. He's happy or he's not happy, or who knows? Did you have a conversation with him either during the summer or here in camp, just about sort of what his role could look like, where there might be opportunities to have yeah. a bigger role? Or? Yeah. <laughs> well, or no. I, well, I mean, listen. I think we got five guys out there that want a bigger role, yeah. right? And maybe more, right? And maybe maybe throw in Precious, maybe throw in Chris, maybe throw you know that, that want a bigger. So, could really, I mean, I talk. I usually talk to all of them, right? And, and just to answer your question, I talk to OG like constantly about it, right? How how he sees it, how we see it, what's the plan, right? It's it's great just to say stuff. You know, right? It's great just to say, I, 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 I deserve a bigger role, right? Or my goals are this, right? Well, you got to have a plan to follow those two comments up, right? So we work on that plan. I'm not going to tell you what it is, Josh. I saw that look on your face. <laughs> What's right? the secret plan? You know yeah. I've got to try it. <laughs> so, um, so that's where we are. I mean, again, I think, I think um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things we can adjust to have certain guys have bigger roles. But... I think you guys also know that it's probably going to be more like certain nights it's going to be certain guys and other nights it's going to be other guys. And over the course of 20 games, 40 games, 60, you know, that stuff kind of evens itself out, right? And and I think that's a good example. Like, I think I think that there'll be nights when OG and Scotty are 25 to 30, and there'll be nights when they're 10 to 15, right? And just same with Freddie, same with Pascal, same with Gary. Precious will be in there. Chris will have his double-figure games here and there. I think I – think um, we've got to make the right play. And like, you can't go into certain nights saying, okay, tonight's my night to get 30. Well, what if they double team you all night? Then it's your night, and all of a sudden it becomes your night to get nine assists, right? So I think that's where we're, we're going with most of these bigger roles and, and things. It's a constant talking about making the right play. Obviously, Pascal is much further ahead at the start of this year than he was at the start of last year. Yes. But where, where, do, you, where, do, you see, where do you see him now? And can he hit the ground, have an immediate impact in game one? Oh, yeah. Pascal's, I mean, he's he's probably, of all the guys, was the most ready to go right at the start. Right? He, he can't, you know, just I think, I think some of the other guys were looking a little more for rhythm and conditioning and timing and, you know, get, kind of getting back in the swing of things. He was, he's, he's ready to go, Doug, for sure. Certainly, a lot more ready to go than he was yeah, for, for the opener last year. But no, he'll be he'll be he'll be ready to go. Again, same with him though. Like, like uh, to me, um, I thought I I thought some really great stretches of defense from him in the preseason. Like really great, like really hard work, really great shot contest. And to me, that always translates to the other end for him for whatever reason. And I think it just has to do with. You know, uh, engagement, in engagement, energy, sound mind, sound play. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and I just think that's a big thing, and and that's good. And I think he, I think he kind of realizes that, so that's going to help our team as well. The other night in Montreal, you talked about this team needing to work hard every night, and that gives you a chance to maybe steal four or five games. It could be the difference between six and third in the conference. Like, how hard is it to convince them of the need for that? Because it doesn't happen around the league. Well, the, the, the ideal or the premise would be that that's who we are and that's the way we got to play. And it probably is, right? Like, 
like um, we need to go out there and you need to feel us at the defensive end and just understand that this is going to be a fight. And even if we can't throw them in, like the other night, we couldn't even throw them in, but, but we're going to keep trying. Like we're going to be on the glass so hard that, that we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're not leaving until we get a bucket type of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, Doug, I think after, after we didn't know who we were at this time of year ago, I think we know that's who we are. And, and, um, we got to bring it. How much does Fred set that tone? Being a little guy, kind of, you know, he's sort of anathema to what your roster is. Well, he he sets it just because that's his nature, Doug. Right? He competes to win. Like he just doesn't, he doesn't really know much better. <laughs> right? I mean, you guys come to practice tomorrow. We'll be playing some games that are being scored, and he's going to be out there fighting. Right. And if that trickles down to guys yeah. like 11 through 15, or for sure, 10 through 15 for on sure, the for sure. I mean, I think, I think. Freddie does it, it, it gets handed off. I think Pascal does it, it gets it gets you know trickles over. I think Scotty does it. When Scotty brings a, a super energetic, he's out there hawking the ball, you know, th then I mean the guy on the ball has four guys usually watching him. And when they see him working hard a lot, that usually says, well they better I better I better get ready to go too, right? The the tr the tone has been set up there on the ball and those guys behind better get to work. There's defensive effort and then there's, you know, executing what yep. what I know you talked a bit about it, but how much more confident are you this year compared to last that <laughs> your guys can pull off what you're asking them to do versus heading into last year? Well, really good question. I'll answer it two ways, right? I'm a lot more confident than I was leading into game one because we weren't doing it last year for about the first two months. And then we started doing it. And I was like, okay, like, like, okay, this guy's... Um, so you would think we could pick up right where we left yeah. off. I don't think we've quite done that yet, right? So there's still some, a little bit of, um, you know, there was a little regression to getting it fresh back, you know, getting back to some of that stuff. and and. The, and that's pretty common, like you know, like like when you get into the season and you're saying, okay, this is you're playing um, Chicago, and you say, hey, we're covering this guy just how we covered the guy last Tuesday, right? Like, the, oh, oh, I got it, you know, like like there isn't enough of that kind of data, yeah, I guess for lack of a better word to use right now. But no, we're we're, we're way, way further ahead. I'm pretty confident they can get stuff done. Um, we've learned a few lessons again as well, and and we see the same kind of yearly recurring issues, right? That we know we got to fit, you know, like we were going through this last year, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. Like here's, you know, we know, you know, we just, sometimes it takes a little time. Fred, I asked Fred the other day about the half court offense and he's like, we'll gradually improve, but we did like, and that, that's part of improving as a whole, but we need to focus on what we're good at. And like, are you okay with that mindset to like, yeah, there's going to be improvement everywhere, but we've got to like really buy into that identity uh, that we're going to be this aggressive defensive team that tur turns it on. And, and I, I don't know. It's no, I know what you're saying. I'm, yeah, I mean, listen, I think that is our identity. To, yeah. to, I mean, I would say, listen, let's go play D. Yeah. Let's create more offense from our defense. Let's let's finish those transitions at a higher clip. Let's not leave. Let's not leave stuff on the table yeah. that could be on the scoreboard. You know. Uh, get better at that and yeah and I think um, I probably feel I mean better about the half court offense I think we're starting to learn where to go and what to do more and more as we as we get going here so I feel a little bit better I don't I don't think it's you know it isn't it isn't like we just got you know we just come down and the first guy goes and well, it makes it look easy and hits a three like a lot of teams. You know, there's a lot of teams that just come down and give it to somebody, and he just whoosh, whoosh, makes it. You know, we we've got to get ourselves um, spaced and organized, and you know, make, make it a thoughtful process a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I only ask because, like, you know, the say not the saying, but conventional wisdom is like that stuff matters more at the playoffs. Yeah. Than where you guys yeah, want to yeah. go. So, yep. I, I mean, did the playoffs? I mean six games, but did it let you know whether this type of style can be effective while making improvements in those other areas in the playoffs if you want to be the team? I mean, I know. I mean, yeah, no, there was moments. I would say this. I would say, again, like, um, it's really hard to judge just based on based yeah. on Scotty was injured. injuries, you know, three yeah. guys out. Like, for the, I mean, once we got playing, you know, it's good. I didn't feel like the offense was a major issue. I thought I thought what 
what I thought we had the series under control and then what let us down was our defensive execution for whatever reason it wasn't the effort it wasn't whatever we just didn't get done like and like like what we needed to get done and that happened early in the game and that kind of that last game and that just now you don't have time to do that in a yeah. playoff game you just don't right coach um last year you know you had a completely different roster now this year you you signed justin champagne you mentioned earlier about the level of investment that you made within him uh, from even seven from last year right is there more trust this season one through 15 than there was this time last season um i think so i think there's more guys there for sure right like we we wouldn't be afraid to play you know pretty much all those guys we know who they are right i think christian's done a good job as a new guy to show us that he's he's fine out there right um justin i thought had a really impactful game helped him make the team the other night you know do, doing doing his strengths um uh, i will say this i think that we are still learning how all those guys fit where right who fits in that second unit who fits as kind of a a bump up if there's injuries guy you know like I think that's that's part of nuancing what's going on and I wish I could sit here and say here's my options but again it changes all the time it changes you know right 10 minutes before the Celtics game oh, yeah. right and it'll probably you know like a Wednesday I kind of have a good idea who's going to be there and who isn't and then but, but I'm imagining that'll probably change too by then so just being able to continue to accept that mm -hmm. that on my part I'm just gonna accept it as that's part of the job right and then try to work as hard as I can to make those make those uh, experiments you know either eat have some results either good or bad so we know mm -hmm. right yeah. and then I have one last question for you just yeah. real quick uh, obviously Christian had a pretty good game against Boston I'd say yeah uh, we got to see some more of his offensive side come out but um, when you when he got drafted on draft night, you actually mentioned that you might see him in the 905 a little bit has that changed at all do you think you're gonna see him more maybe with the big club um, I would imagine we'll see him down there. Mm -hmm. Yep, I would imagine so. I just believe that he, uh, well, first of all, he's going to play for us, I think, as well. There's no doubt about it. Um, but I also just think that it's uh, valuable for him to see, you know, what 40 minutes versus 15 minutes looks like and things like that, more reps and, and all that kind of stuff and get him, get him in late game situations and a lot he can learn down there. So, yeah.